Do you think you're watering correctly? Today I'll show you the basic principles you need to follow to have a successful garden. Hey everybody, Jerry with Lonely Pines Farm. Today we're going to talk about watering and more specifically the right way to be watering. No matter what method of delivery you use to get water on your garden, there's basic principles that you need to follow. We're going to go over three of them right now. First, I have to play with the dog. <laughs> so the first principle I want to talk to you about is watering deeply, but less frequently. Potatoes are a prime example. When we planted these potatoes, they're about six inches deep. So when you go to water, if you just put a little bit on the surface or have a short rainfall, it's not getting six inches down there to where your potatoes roots are. And that's gonna be especially important when it starts forming tubers. You're gonna to need to put on an excess amount of water and it needs to get down there to where the tubers and the roots are growing. It's, it's not unusual to stand in the same spot around a potato or a tomato or a big cabbage plant or whatever and put a gallon of water on it. They need those amounts of water, especially when they're forming heads, tubers, and fruits. A lot of times I get asked how often I do water and that changes as the summer progresses. As it gets hotter, obviously we water more frequently, but on average we water every two to three days depending upon the crop. The potatoes don't need as much water because I drown them every time I come out here so about every three days is good for them but a lettuce crop that has its roots much more towards the surface I'm probably watering that every two days yeah. so ditch the misconception that you've got to come out here every single morning and just spray the hose around and get everything damp that's doing nobody any good it'd be much better for you to come out twice a week and just drown everything and then leave it for two days to dry out So principle number two, one inch of water per week, or maybe two inches. Somewhere along one to two inches of water per week is about what most plants need to be successful. However, this cabbage is gonna need a lot more water than the spinach. It's still one to two inches per week. So how do you differentiate that? How do you measure that? But generally speaking, you just wanna go by its drip line. So a spinach plant, you're talking six inches across. A cabbage plant, at this point in its life, you're talking a foot across. So a lot of times when I plant things, I intentionally make a well and it works fantastically for holding water and specifically close to a half inch or an inch every time I do water. So I'm able to just walk down the row and water, we're watering by hand right now because we don't have a watering system yet but I'm able to walk down here and just fill each well with water and move on to the next one. Um, if we're in a drought or they start forming heads, then they'll need a little bit more water. Um, and so then I'll probably water them three times a week during head formation. Um, the spinach, every two to three days, but really all I'm doing is watering in this furrow. And what I've done here is when I created my row, I left this intentionally high so that I'm able to fill this and kind of flood water to a point. But all the water is still going directly to the roots. It's not getting on the leaves whatsoever. And I'm getting the inch to two inches of water that I need per week easily. Oh yes, perfect. Loving it. <laughs> <laughs> that it was a long me. time ago. <laughs> All right, principle number three. There is an old saying that a dog is man's best friend, but mulch is a farmer's best friend. I like that one a lot. <laughs> so out here we have discovered we have a all new bane to our existence and it is the wind. Um, when we built this plot, this is a 20 by 100, 2000 square feet. And the day we tilled it, 
the earth started eroding from the wind. <laughs> uh, we get some powerful winds coming down through the valley, uh, off the mountains from behind us, as well as off the uh, Strait of Juan de Fuca around the corner. Um, and it, bl it blows here, so mulch. I would highly recommend mulch. Um, it serves multiple purposes. One, <clears throat> weed control. Whatever mulch you put down, we'll get into a few different types here in a minute. Whatever mulch you put down should suppress weeds for you. So like I say, this is a brand new plot. It was tilled. Um, it looked like all the grass behind us. Um, and it is full of weed seeds. And it's a battle that we'll have to deal with for the first couple of years. Um, but I mulch regularly. And the areas that I do it in far surpass the areas that I do not. As far as water retention is considered, this is damp underneath. It's fantastic. And all this is, is a couple inches of green grass that's been mowed down. You could use plastic, you could use grass, you could use straw, you can use cardboard. There's almost anything that restricts the light from getting to your weeds will be great mulch and hold the moisture in the ground for you. And that's where you want it. You don't want it evaporating every time you water. When you, when you water open ground, it, the evaporation process starts immediately. And that's why people recommend that you water super early in the morning when the sun's not even up usually, um, so that it can actually soak into the ground as well. So having mulch down really helps that process because this earth in here is no longer seeing sunlight at all. It's covered in mulch and so there is very little evaporation happening from there um, this bed i've noticed immediately as soon as we planted this is a ruby red chard um, some other swiss chards down here as soon as we planted this bed it started responding immediately so i know some people yeah <laughs> i know some people will say you shouldn't put grass on as a mulch because what about all the weed seeds you're introducing well there's not any weeds. It's pretty rare that I have to come out and pull one. When I water over here, this bed can blow dry in an hour. When I water over here with the mulch on it, <clears throat> it's all day before it has a chance to start drying out. And by that time, it's long since leached into where the roots are that need it. So this bed is a really good example, I feel, on how you should be watering, okay? If you're, when you plant your plants, make a depression around them so they have a well. If you're doing it in a row or a raised bed, leave the edges higher so it forces the water into where your plants are. Water less frequently, but water it really heavily. Try to stick with at least one inch of water per week, maybe two, depending upon what you're growing and the season. Certain things require more water. Do your due diligence and your research on what you're growing. And number three, mulch. This bed here, doing fantastic. Some of the other beds over there, I need the mulch more. <laughs> and that'll really, really help with your watering. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe down below. You can find us on all the different social media avenues. We'll try to get to a video on mulching and compost as soon as possible. And hey, you guys, happy growing.